Hello, my name is Mary Beth Pranzinski. I'm the collection manager of the Natural History Collection here at the University of Alabama. Ralph Chermock was here at the university back in the 50s and 60s. He was director of the museum from 1960 to 1966. But prior to that, he was a professor here and he taught biology and various other environmental type or eco ecological type classes. And he was very influential and instrumental in creating a lot of the environmentalists of today. And that includes E.O. Wilson, who considered himself a Tremachian. So he followed Ralph into the field and did a lot of collecting. And as a result, we have a variety of specimens that were collected by E.O. Wilson in the collection. The Chermocks were very prolific. Ralph and his brother Frank uh, were both entomologists and they traveled around the country collecting together. Ralph's collection is here at the University of Alabama. And historically, they've been housed in these custom-made or handmade wood boxes with a cork bottom, which has a tendency to warp. So a lot of them have split and as a consequence, insects have gotten into the specimens and eaten a lot of them. The butterflies have never been spread or processed, but are folded in little triangles of paper. That was how they were collected, basically, by Dr. Ralph Chermock in the field. And then he put note notations on the little packets. But over the years, they've pretty much been unseen. People don't know that we have them. Researchers don't know that we have this large collection. So here we are in the 21st century and we decided it was time to make it known to the world or to the public. Get it online, digitize everything. And we had to start in increments. We started with um, the paper butterflies and recording the data from that has been a major um, production, I would say, because we're using volunteers who aren't familiar with taxonomy. They can't always read the handwriting of the person that described the species, but we try to find people who are extremely invested and enjoy working with this sort of thing and seeing the progress that's made. My name is Jamie Bynum. I am the volunteer coordinator here in Collections and I am also a lab manager. So what I do is any of our student volunteers, I find projects for them to do and I determine which project would be best for them. My name is Katherine Zobry and I'm an advisor with the Alabama Small Business Development Center. I work for the College of Business. I've always been interested in butterflies and insects in general. I, as a kid I had like every bug box that Toys R Us sold, every educational store in my New Jersey suburban area and a lot of homemade bug boxes. I went to college for political science and economics, hence my current job, which I love, but I'm afforded an opportunity to study and engage with the university community. And I basically just asked if I could volunteer here, not knowing about the Shermock Special Collection of Butterflies. But I did say that, you know, my interest is really in butterflies, moths, and lepidoptology. <laughs> my name is Lauren Hink. I have been volunteering for at least a year and a half or so. This butterfly lost a front left wing, and it's the only one in this tray who's lost a wing that hasn't already been associated with a butterfly. What we're doing is putting the wing in an envelope so it can be pinned with the correct butterfly. I've always really liked uh, insects and bugs and things. Like the only experience I'll have before uh, college, I suppose, is running around and catching them outside. Butterflies are very beautiful creatures, and they come in such variety that you wouldn't you wouldn't honestly think just seeing the ones that you find outside. But uh, with this project, you can see butterflies taken from all over the United States and South America, and they have such variation in how they look and their wingspan and their antenna size and how their wings lie, different wing shapes, different wing colors. There's a lot of biodiversity in Lepidoptera. This is going to open up a huge amount of research into what specimens are found where because each specimen um, corresponds to a, you know, a cataloged like Excel line, essentially, um, a row and, a, and an Excel sheet. This is a way of keeping track of how things have progressed for each species 
not only within Alabama, but around the United States. And other researchers can come in and uh, look at our data and determine, oh yes, historically this uh, particular species existed here, but it no longer does. What's important about this is not so much that we can get at the butterfly, but rather that we have the ID, because this is a, a way of keeping track of which species were collected where and when. Since I'm not a biologist, I'm in anthropology and history, I've enjoyed seeing how in the past they have their idea of archival quality and how it's changed over time and how we do it now. Now we do them in what we call unit trays to not only be able to keep them protected from one another, but also if they need to be moved around into different drawers. And now instead of just wooden boxes that are not very sealed, they go in what's known as Cornell drawers. The top and bottom are made from one solid piece of wood so that they fit perfectly together to make an airtight seal. They also go into a dark cabinet to prevent any light damage. And we also don't use chemicals on them. <laughs> that, we're, that we used to use. And just think, this, this collection is almost 100 years old. I mean, I have a hard time dealing with that because not that I'm almost 100, but it doesn't appear to be that old to me, but I'm sure it does to younger people because, you know, they, they haven't been around that long. So to see something like this to them is quite, you know, eye-opening. It's really cool to see things from like the 1930s and 40s and 50s. Like that to me is awesome. Most of them have Shermock's name on it and it's very interesting to see a piece of history. You think about the global context at that time, 1939 was the beginning of World War II, you know, like the 1950s was the beginning of the Cold War. And it gives me a lot of hope in humanity and nature that people are still collecting butterflies during those like horrendous historical times. The Shermock collection alone is 30,000. There are hundreds of thousands of different specimens here. This is an awesome place to learn, to volunteer, to work. The staff and faculty here are awesome. They make me feel so supported. And they really do, even though it's like just the tiniest little dent in, in this work, I always feel really appreciated. Acquiring a collection like this is probably not something that happens every single day. And the fact that it has been relatively untouched for a number of years makes it that much more valuable because it's in really good shape.